You know, I listen to my subscribers and I read those comments. And many of you have been asking me to do a video on the leather sap. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Stick around. I recently did a video on brass knuckles. I shared three very interesting facts about brass knuckles. That video is done very well because brass knuckles are popular. People want to know about them. But one thing that brass knuckles and the leather sap has in common is it's very controversial with regards to the law. Now, I'll say this as a disclaimer in the beginning. The legalities around the leather sap vary from place to place. It's not illegal everywhere in the states. It's probably illegal in most countries outside of the states, but do your own due diligence and check your state laws. But this is a leather sap. It is a piece of leather here that's shaped a lot like a beaver's tail. It's got a chunk of lead inside of it, and a lot of these have steel springs depending upon the length of them, and these wreck what they come in contact with. This particular sap was made for me and he used engraving and I met this contact on my TikTok channel. His channel is called Web Welder and I will leave his contact info in the description. The sap falls under the baton family obviously and this one comes with the strap on the back so that you can maintain it. I try to be as factual and historical as I can be in these videos with regards to the origin of these things, but I couldn't get as much information on the sap as I could with brass knuckles. But one of the things that I discovered is that there was a time when this was commonly used by the police, but they discontinued it, and I can understand why. If you're allowed to carry a leather sap, it can be a very effective non-lethal means of self-defense, but it can also be lethal if you need it to be because it has crushing power. A strong blow to the head with a leather sap can not only fracture the skull, it can kill, but it can also be a non-lethal weapon. You can strike limbs, and I'm going to do some demonstrating here in just a bit. But, you know, they make these short like this, and they've got longer ones, and he's got some that are longer. I've got one that's twice this length. A while back, I got out and did a little bit of testing, and I hit a coconut, and it smashed the coconut like it was nothing, and I did this test on my TikTok channel. Here's a quick clip. Oh, wow. Smashed it wide open. I've also heard these called slapjacks, which is a very good name for it. Typical defensive strikes with a sap would be to the arms or the legs. Headshots don't even come into the conversation with these unless you're looking for lethal means of defense because these can cause extreme fractures they can kill you could only imagine what that would be like what that would be like just any kind of headshot which the legalities would probably be pretty serious as well if you were in your home and he had a knife or a gun and he was trying to kill you and you crack him that might be a different story you get into it with somebody or it's just some casual drunk that you want to put the stamp on when you come upside his head with a sap you'll be locked up but as always, it comes down to the context of the situation. There are different kinds of attack scenarios, but if we just carelessly strike someone in the head that we really don't need to be striking in the head, there's going to be some serious consequences. Now, as far as using the sap, it's just like with anything, you, you don't want it to be predictable. It's like if you pull out a can of pepper spray and the assailant can see the pepper spray, well, he's going to be prepared to cover his eyes and dodge the attack. It's much the same with anything else. If we're going to use it, we want to be as concealed as possible and we want to be quick and accurate to make an effective connection to get out if that situation arises. There's a lot of quick ways to make a strike with a sap, whether it's you know in a pocket like this, like I've got mine in a pocket or in a back pocket. Um, you know, you've got it close to you this way. You know, you could come from here right up the middle. It's very quick to come right under the assailant's chin. You could come up to the chin and strike here. You could palm and then you could go for another strike, such as a strike here to the collarbone area. Strike here, here, boom. Would be a devastating shot, but it wouldn't be lethal. You can strike a lot of different limbs. You can strike hands. You can strike anything that's coming at you. 
but if a person is going to take a leather sap and start striking in the head with it, the only case they're going to have is if it gets ruled that deadly force was necessary. But there's a lot of non-lethal shots, like a shot to the rib that could end an altercation. Again, a shot to the kneecap, to the hand, to collarbone, there's just a lot of ways that the sap can be used. These are the different kinds that I have that he made me. You know, both these two black ones here have the strap on the back. This one is just got a piece of paracord that you can attach to your arm. That's some of the different ones he made me. These videos are not me saying, go and get a sap and use it. I do these videos to put options on display and also to educate my audience about the things that are out there and the things that have been used over time. But one of my biggest complaints with some of the pushback comments that I get is that it seems like people are more worried about the law itself than they are their own heads. And again, the world of self-defense is versatile. You have a lot of things to choose from. A lot of times people come in these videos like I'm promoting that thing. No, I'm just putting an option out there. It's up to you to determine what you can use as an everyday carry item. And how you choose to use something comes down to the severity of the situation. If you've got somebody who's, you know, pestering you in public and they're not leaving you alone, sometimes you might just need to give them a little warning tap, you know, depending upon how determined they are. But you've got some people in this world that wanna kill you and take everything from you. They'll come into your house, they'll try to kill you your family, what would you not do in those situations? If you're in that type of situation, you do what you need to do to survive and you become absolutely ferocious, man, and let your killer instinct max out. If the situation's bad enough, you gotta think about your survival first. And something like a sap, brass knuckles, knives, whatever it is we use, these things are equalizers for opponents who are bigger, stronger, faster and more able than we are on a toe-to-toe -to -toe basis. Here's a combo strike for those bad situations. Less than lethal situation, stop him from coming forward. You got your baton here, 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 here. It just comes down to context and the situation. The leather sap, ladies and gentlemen, quite an interesting self-defense tool. It's not without controversy and it's not gonna be without people coming in the comments telling me how illegal it is. Again, you gotta check your state laws always do that don't just go by my video check your state laws but do you own a leather sap and have you ever used one in self-defense i'd love to hear your story and what are your thoughts on the sap take care